When interacting with APIs, there are two key concepts that you need to know, headers and query strings. And thankfully, REST Sharp makes it really simple to add headers and query strings. Let's take a look. Hello world, I'm Nick Proud, software engineer and big time .NET fan. And today we're gonna to talk about the two big concepts that come up pretty much every time you interact with an API. Uh, the headers and the query string. Uh, but before we get into it, if you like this video and you find this content useful, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. It is a huge help to the channel. So by this point in the REST Sharp series, we've already looked at how to do GET and POST requests using this library. If you haven't uh, seen the videos already, then do check the previous ones out. They're really useful in terms of getting a, a background on REST Sharp, what it is, and how you can use it to adequately interact with APIs in a very simple and pretty short way. Uh, but let's take a look at our existing requests so far. So as you can see on the screen, we did a request to JSON placeholder, which is our uh, sort of fake API. And with that, we sent a post to the posts endpoint and we built a JSON uh, payload to send up. Now, what we want to do in this video is we want to attach some headers to that request, and then we want to add some query string parameters as well. So I'll start with the headers because it's very, very straightforward. Um, so in terms of this request, uh, just as, uh, as a refresher, we're using the using statement so that we're using our disposable, which will dispose of this REST client as soon as it's finished. Uh, then we're creating our REST client and we're pointing it at our endpoint. So this would be the API that you are speaking to. We've created our own object, which is of type my post. So if you look at the previous video, you'll see that we created us our own type and then we added the properties for that type and that created the payload. Then we created a request object. So that is a rest request, which is a rest sharp object, which encompasses the overall uh, payload that we're going to send. And then within that, we added a JSON body and this accepts a parameter of object in this case my post it's a generic object so it will automatically or implicitly accept the object that you uh, add to it and then create a json payload for that and so now that we've got our request all set up and ready to go we simply do a post and then we get the result back so we want to keep this the way it is but we want to attach some header information to it now for this api it doesn't actually require that you add any headers but i just want to demonstrate how simple it is to add them so right up here where we've created our request round about the same sort of place that we added our payload we can also say that we want to add headers so we can say add header and this method will accept two string parameters a name and a value. So this would be the same as, say for example, if you were doing this request in Postman, you could add a content type header, uh, which would just be the name content type, and then the value would be application slash JSON. Now we don't need to do that for this because the add JSON body method that we added will automatically handle the headers uh, for the content type. But say your API has a very specific header that you need to send, um, maybe it's got a location header or it's got a branch. So say you're speaking to uh, a banking API and you want to make a transaction and associate it with a specific branch, then you can say um, if it's expecting a header called branch, then the value could be London. You know, So that, that could be a very simple header that you create and attach to the request. Uh, now it won't affect it for this one, um, but I'll just demonstrate that it doesn't actually upset the um, execution. Everything works fine. You know, we've just attached a header to our request. But probably more critically, if we look at the request that we actually sent and we die, we, we drill down into the properties, I can take a look at parameters. Uh, and within the results of parameters, you can see that there are several headers and uh, we've got the branch and London. So you can see that it's been attached. This is REST Sharp's way of, of showing how the request is, is built and how what, what it's made up of essentially. Um, but it really is, in terms of adding headers, it's as simple as that, it's just dot add header. And that's what is so attractive about these kinds of libraries. The fact that you can just simply say in plain English, I wanna add a header, it's called this and its value is this. So, so simple. So another aspect that is, which is really key to API calls is the query string. And so 
This API actually does support query strings for doing things like filtering. So you can see, just as a refresher, we were doing previously a call to this post send point. And for this example, we were doing a, a post to create a new post. That makes sense in my own head. Um, but what we could do is we could do a get request and say, I don't want to get all the posts that the API can give me. I only want to get ones where a specific condition is true. I want to filter the data and only return data that is conducive to that filter. So say, for example, um, every post has a user ID. Uh, what if I only want to get the posts that have a user ID of one? You know, that's a very specific condition. I can do that by specifying a query string parameter. Parameter. So if I head over to JSON placeholder, this is the documentation for the API that we're using. And you can see here in filtering resources, we can contact the post send point and we can specify uh, in the query parameter where user ID equals one. So for anyone who's new to query strings and query parameters, essentially when you add your API endpoint or URL, at the end of it, if you add a question mark, that instructs the, um, the browser or the uh, API client that you are adding query strings. And so here, for example, if I was to add query strings to this URL, it won't work, but just for demonstration, uh, you can see I could say uh, user ID equals one. And then I can also say I want more parameters. So I could say uh, location equals uh, UK. And then I can keep adding lots of different parameters. And so this uh, is usually, it's quite common on get requests and it's usually used for things like this, filtering uh, data that's being returned. So if I wanted to do this on my rest request, uh, then first I need to change this to be a get request. So I'm gonna get rid of this object because I don't need it. Uh, and I'm also gonna get rid of this body because I don't need it. And the same for this header as well. It's, it's not needed at all. Um, and then we're gonna change this actual result to get async. And then we need to add our query string parameter. So as you saw in this example, um, if we want to filter the posts by user ID, we can add a query string parameter of user ID and then the value being the user ID we want to filter on. So for this, I want to add that to the rest request. So I'll say re uh, request dot add again, as simple as that query parameter. And then this method accepts uh, three parameters. One of them is uh, optional with the name of the query string parameter, the value that is inside it, and then whether we want to encode it. That essentially means, do we want to, um, do we want the request to have uh, URL encoding? So for a space, for example, it would say percentage 20, all that sort of stuff. By default, that is true, and that is correct in most cases, but in the, you know, in the odd occasion when you don't want to encode the query string, then you can set that to false. But I'm gonna just put in user ID, value as one, and then I'm gonna leave that third parameter blank because I want it to be encoded. So here, this is the equivalent of me saying, question mark, user ID equals one. And that's gonna filter my request to only return items where that condition is true. Uh, so if I then run this, So I'll just step through. So we're gonna add our parameter to our request. So if we just take a look here, we should see there is a query parameter object, the name user ID, the value is one, and we are encoding it. And then if we look at the result, it brings back that it was, it was okay, and it's just returned all the posts where the user ID is one instead of by default bringing back every single post. So we've successfully used the query string parameter using REST Sharp to filter our data. And it really is as simple as that. It's a little bit more complicated if you use the bog standard HTTP, HTTP client. Not too much more complicated, but the, the nice thing about REST Sharp is it just makes it very plain and simple. It's just request dot and then what you want to do. Add header, add query parameter 
add JSON body. It really is a fantastic way of interacting with APIs, and it's one that I can highly recommend. So there we have it. That is how you add headers to a REST request and query string parameters to a request. It really is very, very simple. And I'd be very interested to see if you guys are using any other tools to add your headers, uh, what the most common headers that you need to add, how you're using query strings, all those sorts of things. Get in touch and let me know how you're using it. If you're using REST Sharp in particular, fantastic. Um, I want to know how you're using it. Uh, again, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It's a huge help and helps me make more videos uh, like this one. But until next time, keep coding. You want your roller coaster